Welcome to the Ask Weldon Show, episode 153, the show about performance in life and esport. I am Weldon, and uh, in the show, you ask me questions. Today, we have a number of questions. Uh, how to control your triggered emotions and get what you want. And then we also have a question about being triggered by posture and physical position, not being able to get over that, like, oh, something feels wrong and just focus on the game. Satiating emotions versus just letting go. Uh, and, and a number of questions about duo queuing, um, getting coached from somebody who's just above you or somebody way above you, and how meditating helps you with flow state. Really excited to jump into the show today. Updates. Updates. Um, I'm going to switch my VOD reviews. For those of you watching my League of Legends VOD reviews, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm going to be focusing on Echo Fox and Optic. Uh, I can't focus on TSM anymore. It's too depressing. Uh, so I'm not going to be reviewing their games as much. I will still be watching them. There's also personal reasons why I'm not going to be reviewing TSM's games. Uh, and then I'm in Berlin this week, but I'm going back to Finland tomorrow. So the live schedule for this show, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. And you are also invited to the live premiere of this show when I record it. I just spent an hour basically in Twitch chat, you know, hanging out, answering questions, uh, solving problems with people, discussing sport and inspiration and the beauty of eSport and how it can change the world. But you can you can come over to twitch.tv slash mindgamesweldon and follow that channel and click show notifications when I go live. Basically, I'll be back in Finland. I'll be back on my normal schedule, which means the show will go live at 4.30 a.m. Helsinki time, hopefully every day. Uh, because nobody else is awake then, so there's really nothing to do but stream for y'all. All right. Uh, so yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back from Berlin soon, and I will be kicking that off. And mm, no other real big announcements to speak of right now. Uh, maybe after the weekend, I will let you guys know what's been going on this week, and we'll talk about the future of what teams I may or may not be training then. After I see the results of the weekend and I can brag about them properly or not. Okay, so without further ado, I say we get into the show because I have five questions today and uh, I think it's going to be a doozy of a show. Let's jump in. All right, the first question is from, uh, is an audio question from Discord actually. You can ask a question on Discord by going down below the channel and clicking the Discord link and that will take you to Discord and then you can use the bot that's in Discord or a voice memo app to record your, your question and toss it into the Ask Weldon Show channel, or you can just type your question in and we will glean them that way. Let's listen in. Hello, Weldon. I am a semi-professional League of Legends player, uh, playing in the national leagues of uh, Europe currently, and uh, I spend most of my awakened time either playing, working out, or uh, reading about the game. Some days, however, I feel that my uh, my chair, my mouse, or my keyboard are in a really odd spot. It makes me really uncomfortable and unable to focus on the game because I'm just thinking about how to solve the problem I'm having with my sitting position. Do you think this is just all in my head, or is there something causing this? Thank you for your answer. I've been watching your show for a long time, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. All right, thank you for the question. So the answer is that it is in your head, but that doesn't make it any less real. The way that we train uh, eSport, some people think of it as a very, very mental sport. And that might be true about Hearthstone, but the physical eSports, so CSGO, Hearthstone, not Hearthstone, I just said that, CSGO, uh, Dota, League of Legends, these eSports, in fact, are, are physical sports, meaning that you have to have a certain motor coordination uh, from a certain position. So when you learn that coordination from from your specific position, and then you move that position, you're going to feel like something's off. Your your motor neurons are going to be like, eh, this is not quite wired right. Like I'm wired to like move from this position, not that position. Um, the the question is, do you aim for perfection, or do you deal with the do you deal with the incorrect position through resilience? Okay. Now, what I don't want. What I don't want is for you to be the the StarCraft player who's like has a ruler and is measuring the distance from the edge of the of the table to their keyboard. Okay, that is not where you want to end up. And if you start down that road, you will have to keep going down that road. So what you should do is you should try to make your motor control neurons more robust and more resilient and more able to handle discrepancy by dealing 
with strange postures, strange positions, and discomfort. You should breathe in. You should accept that it's going to be a little bit weird. You should focus on your movement and try to make it more coordinated. You should you should understand that this this incorrect kind of like off posture is just your brain telling you that like you know you're a little bit used to like a different movement but you should you should treat it as a motor learning exercise where you're like learning the same expert movement you had before but from a new angle okay this is really important in sports like tennis where you throw the ball up for a serve and then you have to you have to take the serve right but it's going to be a diff, slightly different position every time now people work on their throw they do and they try to make it perfect and you have the ability to toss the ball up and like let it fall and try to toss it up again but at some point, you just got to hit the ball, and you have to be able to handle variances in your throw. You have to be resilient to the the sag of the ball in the wrong direction. You know, if you want to win a major, you just you just have to be used to it. So one of the best things you can do is to take take serves that you shouldn't otherwise take. Take a bad throw and actually try to serve it in well, and and adjust to that postural difference in like the location of the ball in the air, and you will gain expertise in hitting bad tosses into into a good serve, right? So what I want you to do is gain expertise and be able to execute the same level of play that you're able to do now, but with like slightly different angles on your keyboard or your mouse or your chair and things like that. What if you go to a land and like there, we only have this chair and it's this height and the table's too high and uh, your mouse broke, so here's a replacement and it's the wrong one. Are you just going to be like, well, oh, I lose the land. Like, what if it's your big opportunity to like break through? No, you need to have resilience in your motor cortex to these these variances in temperature and height and and movement. And so, what you want to do is like maybe change the height of your chair when you're training. Like, do it with a table too high, do it with a table too low, change your mouse out. Make sure that the skills that you're learning are not skills only if you happen to be at this angle, but skills that you can execute uh, even if you like change change. Uh, change equipment. Now, I don't think that's necessarily true for like going from a chiclet keyboard to a mechanical keyboard. Like the size of the of the and the location of the keys on the keyboard is actually quite hard to manipulate, okay? In terms of your mentality. So, I would say like you should try to stick with standardized keyboards, okay? Let's not take it too far off the end of the deep end of what I'm talking about here. But um but you should be able to handle maybe different switches, right? You know, brown versus cherry and different senses there. I think that that's something that could be asked, although there seems to be no reason for that. You should be able to kind of stick with a with with the kind of switch that you want, but who knows? Like maybe you'll be at an event and you'll have to borrow a keyboard and it will be cherry instead of brown, or it'll be like the Razer switches that they've invented, or what, was it Razer? Or is it Logitech that has their own switches in the keyboards? Anyway, yeah, it's just like a slightly different feeling. And you're gonna have to like uh, you're gonna have to get used to that and and play with it. So I would say that those things are definitely real. You're definitely experiencing it, like real motor discomfort, and the uh, and you should train through it. You should f actually focus on it. You should allow it to affect you, and you should you should try to treat it as something that you work on. Okay, thanks for the question. Fantastic. Okay, I need some sort of I need some sort of transition, you guys. Like uh, I can go back to the title screen, but that's that seems awfully silly, right? So let me just go back here and I'll open up the first question. The next question is from Rod Rigo Piera. We had one from him yesterday, actually, didn't we? Scrolling up, yep, Rod Rigo Piera. Thank you for this follow-up question. Um, this is from Twitter using the hashtag Ask Weldon, and I don't know why in the world the I is being cut off of the it. I moved it around, tried to manipulate it a little bit. It's not solving the problem, so just pretend that there's an I there. It's kind of faint. You can see it, but let's go ahead and read this. For someone looking to improve, are there benefits to queuing up as a group slash duo, or is it just a waste of time? All right. Um, it's not a waste of time. It is a distraction. Is, is training with a distraction a good thing sometimes? Yes. You don't want to just train yourself to be a solo player and then not have to not have the capabilities to work with somebody and be on a team. Um, is is training with a group going to to help your climb? It depend if they're better than you. Yeah. So it could assist you in ranking up. Really, this is this is a super complex question because I need to know the motivation of why it is you want to train with a group or duo. If the tr if the training with a duo is because he's higher ranked than you and you want him to boost you. Then it's pointless. Like, what's the what's the point? Like, you're just going to be as good as you are. 
Um, if you're training with somebody who's better than you and they can, you can watch them and learn how they think and they can shot call and you can glean from that, that's amazing. You should totally do that. If you want to practice your leadership, you should totally do that. If your goal is to get recruited into the NALCS, you should probably just grind it out to challenger as fast as you can and then start grouping and duoing, right? So there's benefits to learning those skills at the time and place that you need them. If you think like, I don't really know if I'm going to make pro, um, I don't really know if I can grind it to challenger, then you should you should go group and do OQ now because you can learn skills and practice leadership and learn things about the game and have fun social experiences that you would not otherwise have. And you might not go pro, so at the very least, you should glean these other transferable skills out of it, right? Like being able to tolerate being triggered and still being nice to somebody or being able to handle uh, a teammate who's messing up and and needs like comforting right in order to perform well or being able to lead your team or being able to mm, handle disappointment when they let you down or being letting somebody down and apologizing for it and 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 not choking or tilting as a as a response to failing in front of somebody like a friend. So these are very good, fantastic transferable skills to develop. So you should 100% you should 100% be treating grouping and duo queuing as like the main skill that you will get out of esport training if you don't go if you're not going pro, right? If you're not climbing the ladder to go to to hit challenger, okay? So if you're if you're like I want to be an amateur player, I'm going to rank up, I'm probably not going to go pro. I want to like, you know, I want eSport to improve my life for the better. I want my time spending spent playing League or Dota or CSGO to not be a waste. Then grouping and duo queuing is like the thing that will allow you the most expression of those skills and the training of the mentality and the communication and the networking and the social skills that you will use in other places in your life. Okay, So that is my, that is my take on that. It is the opposite of a waste of time. Unless you're just trying to get pro as fast as you can, in which case... It's kind of a distraction from just learning and criticizing yourself and grinding up. You should hire a coach instead of a duo queue partner in that case. All right. Thank you for the question. Fantastic. And now we have another audio question, everybody. Remember that you can hop into Discord and ask these questions. This was a little bit long, so. Hi, Weldon. So I've noticed recently that I kind of have what I'm going to call an ultimatum habit loop. Um, I tend to have a trigger, which is just anything that like emotionally upsets me or pushes me in a bad direction, or if I don't get what I want, such as like teammates doing stupid plays coming into my lane and feeding in League of Legends. Um, and then my routine is I normally start to rationalize it to some degree, and then I come up with a response to the trigger event. That's often negative, like, oh, well, if he does this, then I'm going to scream at him. Or if uh, if my boss yells at me, I'm going to quit work, stuff like that. And then I realize my reward tends to be my satiated emotions, um, which isn't really what I want, value-wise. Um, so I was wondering how you would approach this habit loop to try and turn it into a positive thing. Because I know I can't just get rid of habits, but I can build new habits by changing my routine and keeping my reward and my trigger the same. Okay, so first of all, LS, thanks for calling into the show. I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm so glad that you've you've stooped to asking advice from somebody who obviously is much worse at League of Legends than you. Uh, just kidding, you guys. I don't think that that's LS calling into the show. His Discord name doesn't really match up with uh, Nick's, so... But, <laughs> but I found your doppelganger, LS. If you ever need a stunt double, for an online podcast or audio show, and you just want to like be like, I want to do this interview, but I just don't have time. Well, this is the guy for you. I can give you his contact info. I'm sure that he'd be happy to pretend to be you uh, and handle all those interview requests. So we can jump into that. Uh, getting back to the question, I didn't actually listen to it, but luckily I've listened to it like two or three times already. So I remember the content. Satiating emotions versus letting go. So the so you're getting triggered. And you get triggered by this event, it's either in real life or it's in the game, and you take action on it, right? You do behavior. And then you realize the purpose of that behavior is to satiate the emotions or to remove the emotions. Those of you who get triggered can identify with this. However, there's an equally bad example of this 
uh, in in basically not feeling emotion. So let's say like you make a mistake and then you rationalize it. You say it's okay. It's just it's just like a it's just a game that doesn't matter. And you let the emotions go because you're like it doesn't matter. It's just it's just like a you know it's it's a non ranked game. It's a normal game. So whatever. And you don't you don't like feel any emotions about the the mistake because you just kind of like rationalize it away. Okay. Now, at first glance, you might be like, but that's a good thing. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to move on and not focus on the mistake and move on for the present. Correct. And and that's something that normal people do, and it's really fine. But it's the same thing you're doing. Uh, you're trying to, like, essentially satiate or remove or avoid the emotions. It's just, a, it's just a much better version of what this wonderful gentleman is saying where he, like, lashes out at people, right? He lashes out at people in order to, in order to share his pain. In order to show people that he's hurt, in order to make other people hurt like him, like he feels inside, right? Um, and then, like one level up from that is like, okay, well, I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna not feel, like I'm gonna I'm gonna relax. So I don't feel those emotions. I'm just gonna be like, I can't control this, you know, or like it's just a normal game or rationalize it away. Great. The problem is, what if later in life you get into a point where it's not possible? Like it is actually a serious position. It is actually a life or death situation. It is actually parenting. It is actually a job is on the line. It is actually a real competitive game. And then the same emotions come up. And your coping mechanisms when you were at first starting were like lashing out at other people and like spreading out your, your emotions that you couldn't handle. And then your second coping response was rationalizing it away and making the emotions kind of like just quickly disappear because <clears throat> because they, they weren't important enough to like actually matter. And now all of a sudden you're in the big game you're in the life and death situation. You're in the situation where, like, you're in a fight with your your significant other, and you actually have to have to deal with the emotions right there uh, in order to get through the conversation and continuing. And you you're like, okay, well, I need to level it up again. I need to go from level one to two. Okay, I did that. I need to go from level two to three. Okay. So this is addressed to those people, both who are getting triggered and like lashing out, and then those people who have leveled up from that and are getting the emotion, but then are just quickly putting it away. Dealing with emotion is 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 something that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life, okay? And it is going to define who you are as a human being. So it's worthwhile to start tackling it at any point in your life. One of the best ways to start tackling it practically, like just practical exercise. Let me back away from the philosophy for a second. Do gratefulness conditioning. Do mindfulness. And then lean into emotion when it comes. Lean into it. Don't create narratives around it. Don't tell stories about it. Just like when you feel sorrow, when you feel pain, when you feel agony, lean into it. Okay, I told this story on my live stream, but basically I got an email yesterday. It was a really disappointing email. Um, uh, it was from, I'm trying to start a company in the US. I was doing it through this program. Uh, and they're like, unfortunately, we won't be able to support Mind Games Digital Inc. with Atlas. We, after reviewing your application, we found that your business presents a higher level of risk and our financial partners are currently able to work with. Code word for like, you're not making enough money and you suck and you don't have an investor who will bail you out and we don't want to work with you because you're not going to like pay us money if something's failing. You don't have some guy who's just going to throw us 20 grand at you if you're like, if your business is losing. Oh, I'm so sorry that I have like a real small business that's just making real money and I don't have some big investor, you know, to like bail me out if something goes bad, blah, blah, blah. But like, right? So it's a really frustrating situation. And like it creates sorrow and it creates feelings of smallness and feelings of, of second guessing myself and a lack of confidence. I'm like, oh, wow, is my business actually that bad that like they don't even want to, you know, like work with me on it. Um, and then and then feelings of overwhelm, like, oh, I have to do it all myself and I have to figure out all the legal and the financial stuff myself now. And so, right. And so the way that that like you deal with these emotions is that you you Im you lean into and embrace the sorrow and you lean into and you embrace the belittling of yourself and you lean into and you embrace it and you just you observe it from a from a witness position okay now there was a there was a wonderful quote that was posted in my discord uh this morning or, or yesterday which i want to share with you guys related to this this emotional states thing okay um and it goes like this it was posted on twitter by uh, no, it was posted by BitConnect. Oh my God, his name is BitConnect. Okay, you can you can search YouTube for the BitConnect video, but don't leave my video to watch it. Okay, but anyway, here's what it goes. It's from Lisa Rankin. Thank you, BitConnect, for linking this. 
Studies show that emotions last no longer than 90 seconds, unless we attach stories to them. You have a feeling of being lonely, and this will pass through you quickly, unless you make up a story about how you're lonely because you're unlovable and worthless and nobody will ever love you, and you're going to be alone forever. When you attach to the story, you suffer. You suffer needlessly, and the suffering can linger for years. But you don't have to choose to suffer this way. Your soul can find peace, comfort, and stillness, even in the most difficult times, if you're able to view your negative emotions from a witness, from this witness position. So when we're talking about negative emotions right here, we're not talking about bad emotions. These aren't bad emotions. These are negative emotions. There are also positive emotions. Some are bad, some are good. There are negative emotions that are good for you. There are negative emotions that are bad for you. Shame versus guilt. Shame is generally bad for you, although it is very useful for survival, and it's a properly evolved emotion that we need, and guilt is usually good for you. Um, they're both negative emotions, right? So what she's talking about here is the attachment of stories to these negative emotions or the avoiding them completely. What you need to do is you need to stand witness and testimony to the emotions that you experience. You need to accept them as proper in your life and things that are valid to experience and understand the reasons why you do. But then you need to you need to change your behavior. You need to control your behavior, right? So let's go back to the question. What is this gentleman really asking? He's asking, okay, these things are happening and then I'm doing something. What are you doing? Okay. The behavior is the thing that you can control. You cannot control your emotions. Go ahead and try. It won't work. I promise. By the time the emotion comes, it's too late. You're triggered. Okay. And even if you're really good at avoiding it now, if you're like, oh, no, I don't experience discomfort anymore. When I play League of Legends, I'm totally zenned out. You're like, you got your music. You got your tea. You, you like mute your teammates. You're like, la, 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 peaceful land, no bad emotions. Yeah, cool. Awesome. What about like you're going down the street and this like nasty guy confronts you with some racist, racist remark right in your face and the emotions all come back and you're like, oh, I've spent so long avoiding them. I don't know how to witness and testimony to my own emotions. So what I recommend, and, and by the way, I do recommend like muting all your teammates and getting your tea and your music and bringing on the emotions one at a time as you rank up and learn the skill of, of dealing with this, right? But the thing that you're controlling is your behavior. I don't care how you feel about your emotions. Struggle with it. Suffer with it. Sorrow with it. Tell stories about it. But then step back. Realize that you're like, okay, all that aside, this is what I want to do. The only thing I can control is my behavior. What are you going to say? What are you going to do? What are you going to say and what are you going to do? What are you going to say and what are you going to do? What are you going to focus on? Those are the things you can control. Make a plan. What are you going to say? Say the thing that you would want to say long term. Like look back and be like, okay, last time I said this. Don't want to, like at the time, yay. Like I was satiating my emotion. Now I'm like, why did I even say that? It's not what I would have wanted to say if I was somebody else. It's not... The thing that the people who I aspire to be say, it's not who I want to be. Okay, so what do you want to say? Okay, just say it. Write it down, say it. What do you want to do? What what did, what do your heroes do when they experience emotion like that? Pretend your hero is experiencing that emotion. What do they do, right? Then do that. It's really hard, okay? This is super simple. It is not easy. It's super simple. It's not easy. It's like normally you can just say, I'm sorry, it's my fault. And you can listen and you can say, uh, yeah, I agree. Um, but then like sometimes you're in, a, you're in a fight where that's not true or you think or you feel that it's like violating you. And saying those words, the difference between apologizing and saying those words and not doing anything is like an infinite gulf, an infinite gulf that you cannot cross. Like I literally can't say that. Okay, here's a simple example of that. You go down, it's the morning, you're like, I'm so excited to like like help out my family. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna like do the dishes. I'm gonna take out the trash. My mom's gonna come down and be like, "Oh my gosh, my son's so amazing. My daughter's so amazing." Like you just are so thoughtful. Like you just took out the trash and you and you did the dishes and like the kitchen's all clean and like it's so beautiful and I can make breakfast and like I just love you so much. And you're just like I'm like yesterday I was playing too many video games and and I and I want to apologize for that like in a, in a in a very action filled way and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna like I'm just gonna do this thing and like it's gonna be me and I'm gonna own it right and. Then you hear your mom your mom hears you walking by in the hallway and she yells at the door like i hope you're not gonna play video games all day go down and clean the kitchen and you're like there's no way you're gonna take out the trash you're like screw that and just go back to your room and you're like cue cue up and you're like you're not gonna do this now because you're obligated to do it right so going and like going and doing the dishes now is like 
caving, right? It's like an affront. It's like you were going to give this beautiful gift, and now it's not a gift anymore. It's a mandatory mandate. And you're like, and all of the joy is taken out of it. And you're like, well, I'm not going to do it now, right? But just because the emotion is taken out, the emotion was your motivation. What about the actual action? What about the action that you were going to do? What about the behavior and the meaning the behavior has in the world, independent of your emotion? The emotion behind what you were doing, the intent, sure, that's important. But like for you, it was just fuel. It was the fuel that was inspiring the action. The action is still correct. So are you going to do it or not? Like crossing that gulf and actually doing the dishes in that case is like 100 miles away from where you were five seconds ago when the emotion was on your side. But you still want to cross that gulf. Right. So this is the challenge that you have to undertake when you when you decide I'm going to control my emotions. No, you're not. You're never going to control your emotions. You're going to control your behavior. You got to plan for this. You got to value. You got to value the things that you want. You have to value doing the dishes. It can't be a goal that like I'm going to experience the joy of giving a gift, and and that is what I want. And so I'm going to go to the dishes. You have to be like doing the dishes is the right thing to do because it is the right thing to do. And now I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Does that make sense? Okay. This is a very long answer, but I hope that it was helpful in, in a myriad of ways for both the questioner and y'all. Okay. You guys, let's go on to question number three. Four. Question number four. I think. Yeah. All right. Which is better, a coach from Masters or one or one division above me. I'm worried that the advice they give might be minutia I won't comprehend. By the way, the previous question that I answered for LS, I mean, it wasn't really Nick, right? But let's pretend it was. Like, let's spread that. Let's spread that word, right? Should link this to him and be like, thanks LS for like the best question ever. And I hope that the answer was useful for you, Nick. <clears throat> Not that you need it, but, uh, but like, I feel like I kind of went off there. So apologies for going off, but also uh, this basically encapsulates my show. Like I can quit now. Episode 153, we're done. I gave you all the answers. I don't know what else you want to ask. That was it. The answers to life, guys. All right, which is better? A coach for mas from Masters or one division above me? I'm worried that the advice they might give might be minutia. I won't comprehend. Okay, um, go for the higher level coach. Always, always, always take the highest possible level you can. You will not understand everything that they say, but it will push you to curve jump. Okay, you you don't want to climb up the pyramid step by step. You want the rocket pack. Okay, maybe the rock, rocket pack won't work. Like maybe it's out of fuel, and you still got to step up the next step, right? But like sometimes, what the thing they say will skip you seven steps, and you'll be like, okay, awesome. So why in the world would you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Take the take the the super advanced coach, and then if you don't understand the minutia, write it down and keep thinking about it every single day until you figure it out. And that will curve jump you. It will you'll instead of stepping on step four, five, and six, you'll go straight from two to seven. Uh, sometimes, okay. Now, if your aspiration is not to go to the top as fast as possible, but your aspiration is to enjoy yourself and have fun, then you want to set goals you can achieve in a stepwise fashion. Then you take the coach who's going to teach you the next thing. And and then you accomplish that thing and you feel satisfied for it, right? That is the steps that you take. If your goal is to like enjoy the game and to step up piece by piece and to get the satisfaction of, of improvement and to always see yourself advancing. And that's fine. Like that's a beautiful thing, and that's a wonderful way to play the game. And you should you should do that if you want to do that. You be self aware, right? Be like, I'm not going to go pro, and I don't really care about getting diamond, but I do really care about getting gold, and I want to enjoy getting gold. I want to step up piece by piece, and I want to feel achievement every time I log in. Go with the coach right above you. But if your goal is to climb as fast as possible, take the risk to curve jump. Um, take the pain associated with having somebody who's just looking at you and being like, oh my God, you're such trash. But I'm not going to say that because you're my student. Let's figure this out. You know, and, and the embarrassment of being like, wow, I am so bad that like, that like this guy can barely stand it. You know, you're just embarrassing yourself in front of this diamond player, or this challenger player over and over again. The point is that like, oh, by the way, you're gold three. So, uh, the, I forgot the question was gold three. So going to plat, but, but anyway, um, 
Yeah, but but like take that emotional and physical risk, and uh, you might just like get slightly better, just like a normal coach who's right above you. But you also might figure something out and jump up a lot. So yeah, that's my recommendation. Okay, guys, last question coming up, I believe. Yep, last question coming up. Before I jump into the last question, I have to tell you about my Mac training program, mindfulness, mindfulness, acceptance, commitment. Okay, these are the steps to doing the thing that I was talking about in question number three, satiating emotions versus letting it go and controlling your behavior. Okay, it is all about becoming aware of the emotions and how they're affecting you, uh, accepting the emotions and then committing yourself to doing the thing that you want to do. These are the three steps that you need. This is exactly the answer to what I was describing before. And you can practice it and you can become aware of the steps and you can see how they operate in your life. <clears throat> and then you can you can start leveling yourself up like piece by piece. You can say like the hardest thing for me to do in life right now is this. Then you it'll become easy. And then the next hardest thing to do in my life is this. And then you grind at it and you're like, okay, it's tough. I accept it. I commit to these these actions and then it's easy and you start transferring these skills around to different areas of your life from your from your esport to your studies from your studies to your relationship from your relationship to your to your family from your family to your diet from the diet to the gym right these things are transferable if you understand the systems of how it is that you you become aware of your emotions accept your emotions and commit yourself to behaviors that are that are valued by you in the long term how you do things and how you achieve things not what you achieve right so this is what I teach to pro teams. This is the program that like, I based all of my sports psychology on after I graduated um, in, in all the research that I did like post, post my master's. And uh, it, it comes from research in sports psychology. Like this is, this is straight from the field, straight from a 2004, like uh, kind of like entrance into the, into the sports psychology field of mindfulness. Uh, and uh, when I stopped being able to coach just like every amateur player that kind of came my way because I was grinding it out as a volunteer, like as you should do, you know, for a couple of years, just coaching whoever I could. Uh, when I stopped doing that and I started doing pro teams, I wasn't able to keep up with the, like the amateur player base. And so I created this video course specifically about uh, these concepts. And, and I, tr I tried to price it in a way that would like allow it to come to the masses, but still have a little bit of the psychological, like, okay, I paid for this thing and like, it's, I'm committed to it. Right. Um, and also the money right now that you, you use on this program is essentially being rolled back into, well, apparently not Atlas, but rolled back into this program because I'm working on the next version, right? I'm always trying to improve this. This is kind of like one of the main things I, I do. And version one, version two, version three, I took a two year break from improving this program because I was so focused on Dojo Madness and the pro teams. But I'm so far this year, I'm taking off from pro, pro coaching in order to improve my coaching for amateur athletes and aspiring athletes in eSport. And so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm working with a developer on, on the next version of this program. I'm working on the content for the next version of this program and anything that you purchase now, not only will you grandfather into the app when it comes out, but you will, so, so that you, you one price for life, right? Basically, uh, which is not, which is going to go away when the app comes out because it's going to have a different model, but also, um, you're going to support the, the actual development of that app. So, uh, of course, you can also do that just monetarily. You can go to my Twitch channel, and that's the community that we're, we're kind of using to build it. But, uh, but anyway, make sure that you check that out. Everybody who's in the program is going to be invited into the app when it's live as the beta tester and everything like that. Um, of course, you just start ahead of time. Uh, because otherwise you won't have anything to compare to the new content when it comes out. But make sure you check that out. At least look at the landing page uh, and watch the video, mindgames.gg slash MAC. Use the code AskWeldon, A-S-K-W-E-L-D-O-N on checkout to show that you are coming from this YouTube video uh, and to get the $5 discount to bring it down from 30 to 25 USD. Thank you. Final question. When you begin meditating, what helps you get into the flow state easily? What are some specifics that you can use on a daily basis in your meditation? Okay, when you begin meditating, what helps you get into the flow state easily? Um, for me, I don't know about general because I haven't coached a lot of, of meditation, right? I do a lot of meditation with players, 
but I don't ask them like, you know, what are you, what's failing for you? How can we fix it? How can we improve it, et cetera? So I should probably do more of that. But in the meanwhile, let me talk about my own experience and hopefully that's enough to help. And if it's not, I, I apologize. Um, so one of the things that I use to get better into the focused state of meditation, which by the way, you cannot do meditation wrong. So, so don't think that like there's a gradations of like, oh, I suck at this. No, I'm better at this. Or like, I'm not doing it right. No, you're doing it right. Probably it's pretty hard to do it, mess it up. You can like fail at it for a little bit, but if you even succeed for one moment, you know, you've got that meditation, at least you, you got the meditation in, right? A single focus, a single rep is, is everything you need to make that 20 minutes worthwhile. It's better than zero. One is better than zero. Okay. Anyway, to get into that focus state, um, one of the things I do is I like to abstract myself from my body. I like to pretend to be a ghost. I like to visualize the space. So when I'm doing listening, listening to sounds, I try to visualize the distance from my ears that the thing was. And I try to see the space in between and the airwaves traveling through the air to my ear. And I try to visualize the thing that made the sound. And I try to just see it like with imagery as well as with audio orally in my head. And sometimes it helps to even open your eyes with a soft focus and kind of see everything in the environment uh, in, in that way as well. And then when I'm doing the breathing, I like to essentially either scan my body like bottom, uh, like head to toe and, and kind of like continuously flux and change the, the 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 muscles that I'm focusing on and the part of my body that I'm focusing on instead of just sticking on my stomach. And I like to basically step out of my body and like see myself from outside. I like to visualize myself sitting there. I like to see my posture. I like to see the room and the space around me. And I just like kind of like to, get to witness that essentially like to visualize it. And that helps me a lot to maintain that focus state to like concentrate on just like what is happening and what is happening to me. And then, and then after I kind of like have got that and I've pushed out some distractions from my mind, then I might just go back to just focusing completely on the breath. Uh, but usually if I just start that way, my mind is running so fast a miles, a hundred miles a minute that it's like, it just runs off. So I like to overwhelm my brain with, with really constructed imagery that is always in the present and then step back from that. Once I get into the, like the, the present state and I've like kind of calmed down from from the the racing thoughts that i've had so that is that is what i do uh which is the the basis for for helping me in, in a daily way getting into the mindful state when i'm doing meditating and i hope that it's useful advice for you it might not be figure out your own system figure out your own method and uh and i hope that you are able to advance or at least feel as if you're improving Thanks for the show, guys. That was the show for today. Make sure you check out the Mac program. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you want more videos like this. Make sure that you share this video with somebody who needs to hear it if it will improve your standing with them. So don't share it at the cost of yourself, but if you think that this is valuable and if you think somebody needs to hear it, make sure to push it their way and say, like, look what I found, and they will be so appreciative of that that you will gain standing in their eyes for giving them such great advice and such great content. And if that's not the case, then don't worry about it. You don't have to share this video with anybody if you think it's crap and you can't think of anybody to share it with. But do make sure that you consider checking out the live show on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mindgamesweldon. You can hop over there. We have a number of subscribers and we have a little community. And I'm going to go over there right now and hang out for the remainder of the show. And we're going to discuss all of the topics that we discussed in the show today more in depth with them. See you guys later.